So in this presentation, we are going to cover the relation between covariance, correlation, and PCA. So the learning objective of this short presentation is that you should know the relation between correlation, PCA, loading plot, and score plot. And further know that the correlation matrix between a set of variables is the driver for the principal component analysis. So just a short recap. Here we have a PCA plot, a biplot, where we have the dots being different samples and the arrows here being different variables. And what we see here is the correlation structure between these different variables where the loadings, so-called loadings, represent the correlation. So for instance, sour and tobacco are two variables and because they point in the same direction with a fairly long arrow, they are correlated. Naughty, on the other hand, is oppositely correlated to tobacco and sour, and bitter is not correlated at all to either naughty, tobacco, or sour, because the angle here is 90 degrees. So just a short exercise that you can do is to say, well, here I have three scatter plots between two response variables each, and now use the loading plot to put in the labels on the axis here. So there are four labels to be put, bitter, nutty, sour, and tobacco, so some of them should be used twice. And so put them in on the correct axis here, reflecting the structure here. So you pause the video now and you contemplate under that in a couple of minutes. So here are the results. So we see that tobacco and sour, they are highly correlated. And here we have a, a positive correlation between two variables. So tobacco and sour are the labels for this scatter plot. This plot is showing a negative correlation, and we see a negative correlation between naughty tobacco or naughty and sour. So here it will be naughty on the one axis and tobacco or sour on the other axis. It's really hard to tell whether it's one or the other, but it's naughty on one of the axis and tobacco or sour on the other. Here we see a correlation between two variables that are not correlated at all. The, the, the line here is almost straight flat. And we have bitter and naughty being not correlated, and we also have bitter to back on sour not being correlated. So bitter versus any of these three would give a plot like this where there's no correlation. So you see that you can use the loading plot here the position of the arrows or the loadings to reveal which type of correlation there are between the different variables. So one could also ask which samples drives the association. So we see here an association between bitter and chocolate. So we have some samples down here which are low in both and we have some samples up here which are high in both. So the driver of this association is the low samples and the upper samples. On the other hand, we have a PCA of exactly the same data set, where we see that chocolate and bitter, these two variables have an arrow pointing in the exact same direction over here. So what does that mean? That means that the samples out here are high in both of these variables. On the other hand, the samples out here are low in both of these variables. So let's see if these samples on the PCA plot correspond to the samples over here. So the samples driving the associations are, so if we look at this correlation, we could say, well, the ones with high values of both bitter and chocolate, that, these, that is these ones in the scatter plot, that would be the samples here on the PCA plot because they are pointing in the same direction as the arrows for chocolate and bitter. So these samples would be exactly the same. On the other hand, the ones obtaining low ratings with respect to bitter and chocolate are the samples down here, and that is exactly the samples in the score plots on the opposite side of the direction of the arrows. So these samples are the same as these samples. So. Another issue we use when we do PCA is that we scale and center our data. So this is the original data, but they live on totally different scales. So if we plot the data without 
taking into account the different scales, we'll get a nice plot like this. But if we plot the data where we say, well, use exactly the same scale on both axes, we'll get something like this. And this is what the computer will see. And this is not optimal because it doesn't reflect relation between the two variables, which is obvious here. So what we do is that we mean center the data. So to get 0.0, .0 into the middle of the swarm. However, in this case, we still have scale ambiguity. So this scale is way too high and this scale is optimal. Um, so what we do is we divide by the standard deviation within each variable and we'll get something like this. So what we end out with is that we give a representation to the computer which is exactly the same as what we see when we scatter plot it. So that's why we do auto scaling. And let's see how that is related to to correlation, calculation of the correlation. So if we see here, the correlation coefficient is based on the covariance, which is the upper part here. And what is interesting here is that we see that each of the variables are centered. That is that we take all the observations and subtract the average. And we do that for both x and y. So this gives the co covariance uh, between the two variables x and y. And then we go further on and take the covariance here and scale by the standard deviation of each of the variables. And that is exactly what is happening when we do auto scaling, that we do a centering, so moving the data to the middle of the swarm and then doing a scaling to get each of the axes to be representative of uh, the total variation. Okay, so correlation and variance explained. So this is a PCA plot, and you see that in this first component you have 48% uh, of the variance explained, and in the second component have 32% of the variance explained. So roughly you will have about 80% of the variance explained. In this plot there is put a circle here, and this circle reflects how well are the variables described. And if you have an arrow here, a loading value, which goes all the way to the edge of this circle, it means that all the information regarding that variable, in this case intensity, is totally captured by this PCA plot. So you will not gain anything by chucking out the intensity variable and looking at it by itself, because it would be exactly reflecting the position of these points. On the other hand, if you have a variable like chocolate, which have a shorter arrow, we see that that it's not as well as um, explained as the other variables. So the length of the arrow here is proportional to how well it is explained. And if it goes all the way out here, we have 100% variance explained for this particular variable. So when interpreting correlation between two variables, you need to take into account that both they need to be pretty close to each other to be highly correlated, but furthermore that they also need to be explained in the PCA. And in this case, tobacco and sour is fairly well explained, and intensity in roses is also fairly well explained. On the other hand, chocolate is not so well explained, so the position of chocolate is a little bit more ambiguous in terms of interpretation. So PCA versus correlation analysis. So if you here we have a matrix where we look at the number of variables that we look at, what it is when we do correlation analysis and what it is when we do PCA. So if you have one variable, we cannot talk about doing correlation analysis. It simply doesn't make any sense to correlate something which is one thing. And furthermore, uh, PCA doesn't make any sense at all on one variable. If you do correlation and if you have two variables and you do correlation analysis, you will say, well, that is exactly spot on. We plot a scatter plot to calculate a correlation coefficient between those two variables. If you do a PCA on two variables, you will get exactly the same as a correlation analysis. If you get more than two variables, and that's reflected by the P here, the number of variables, being larger than two, then the number of cor correlation analysis you will get is p by uh, 
1 minus p divided by 2. So if I, for instance, have four variables, that will be 4 times 3, that's 12 divided by 2, that will be 6 correlation analysis between those four variables. PCA is here, you could say, a generalized correlation analysis where you get everything in one analysis. So you plug in your variables and you do a PCA and you will get all the correlation analysis in a course overview kind of fashion. That's it.